tonight. If you guys want to go ahead and stand and join us in worship of the Lord tonight, we can do that as a body together. I don't know about you guys, but I love, I whispered to Cassidy next to me, I love those instrumentals, listening to them. I feel like I could listen to them all day long on repeat. Um, but now we get to use our voices too, right? So we're going to praise the Lord together. Welcome all of you here. Um, over this last week, we had a couple times where we were able to uh, have this room filled right up with um, with people, and 
we sat there looking at it. It was just so awesome to see it set up again the way that it was, just chairs lined up against the walls in the back and the back one came up, coming all the way around. And and then come right to our minds, those of us that set up and see this this day happen, to go, you know what, this is this is gonna be prayer night soon. And you know, we're on our way. Of, of just uh, of God gathering a group of people who are coming together and pray and call on him and um, it's just so important it's vital to this church it's vital to our our relationship with the Lord um, and and even sometimes to slow down enough to look at prayer and and maybe learn something else about it while we're here other than just sitting down and start just talking and so we're going to get to that in a little while, but then there was a, a thing that happened today uh, in, in talking to a guy who came in and he, he gave me part of his testimony again today. I had heard part of it before, but he gave part of it again. And he had a line in the middle of that testimony that he said, and I'm not going to give it to you. I wish I could, uh, because I asked him to share his testimony coming up soon, and uh, he's, he's considering that. And I don't want to steal that line because of what God had done. It's, it's because Jesus is being revealed through him for what happened, and it's not mine to give, it's his. But it just was so inspiring to me to hear it reminded me all over again of what God is doing. Um, I was going to change my shirt tonight before I came, and then I didn't. And it says, the big dog is always right, and I'm the big dog. Uh, I'm really not. <laughs> I kept it on on purpose, though, because um, it, it reminded me of another testimony of a, a man who was being invited to church again and again and again by a friend, and he just always declined. Uh, it was a, a, a large church, a televised church, and um, I finally on a Sunday he said yes, and so the friend came and picked him up. When he came to get in the car, his he just had thrown on his one of his shirts that was going to be obnoxious, and it said, "Un blankety blank believable," in real big letters across the shirt. He said, as he came out to the car, I thought, "Are you serious? Of all days you're going to go to church, you're going to wear that shirt?" And he goes, "In my mind, I want to tell him go back in the house and change your shirt. We're going to church." And he said, "I didn't." He's coming to church, he's going to go just the way that he is. He said, we showed up at church, and I'm thinking, okay, we're going to find some place to sit back here, like we all would. He goes, before I could even turn around, he had slipped through my fingers, and he was so excited what he saw of, of the worship band going over things that he went right to the front row like a rock concert and got right in the front. He was just, he was just gone. He was in, there he was in the front row. He goes, like, and I looked up at the pastor, and I saw, all of a sudden I saw his eyes kind of pan over and look, and it's kind of like, hmm. As he read his shirt, just bigger than life, and he says, and the worship went off, and this guy, he didn't know anything of the Lord, but he was so into the music that he just was just standing with arms, and you're just joining everybody else, like, just, 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 just praise, I'm just, I'm just into the concert, you know, and the cameras, who knows if they picked it up, he said he was right there front and center, he said, and then everybody sat, and the, and the message came, and then the pastor gave the altar call, he says, yeah, and you guessed it who stood up and walked right to the front and got on her knees and surrendered life to Jesus. But Mr. Unblankety Blank Believable. And then this, this pastor that was talking said it really was unbelievable to see what happened. He, was, he could have been critical of that moment and said, change it up. But that's not what Jesus wants. We, don't, we come to him like we are and he, he then reveals to us what's what's not supposed to be that way. And that's what love does. And it kind of brings me back to that line that I didn't get to share about testimony that I'm not going to. It's in your prayer prompter here tonight pertaining to ministry of the church under that headline. And it says, for upcoming evening services, the second line down, for upcoming evening services for those who will be giving testimonies of what Jesus has done in their lives. We're to that spot again. And I'm convinced that this year, we're not going to have trouble finding people to share. In the past, I'll be honest with you, we've had trouble finding people to share. 
It's always, oh, let me think about it. Let me think about it. Let me, let me think. I'll get back to you. Let me think. They'll get back to you. But the Lord's doing things in their lives. You know that he is. And it's not for us to keep for ourselves because that's what God's done. We shall be witnesses and we will talk about it. We won't just take it for us. And so it was just it's impressed on my heart tonight that um, I said, you know what? It's going to be, it's going to come from, from this room. Again, it's going to come from this room. Uh, people that are already pressing into the Lord. If you're here, the Lord's already been doing things in your lives. I know he has. He's been showing you who he is in ways that um, are just different. It doesn't have to be your whole life testimony, but this week he might show you who he is. Last week he may have shown you. There's just there's things that have been happening in your life where you just know, man, God, just he did it again. He was there. I just know it. I just know it. And it's all part of your testimony. And so I want to take advantage of nights like these while we're here together. So, specific instructions. First, tonight, I want you to you're pray for somebody near you. And you're going to say your name out loud. I don't care how well you know them. Maybe you don't know them. But you may know them very well. Say your name out loud. And I want you just to pray for each other. That that testimony that's in you would come alive. That testimony would... You pray for them in that way for their testimony. Because that testimony might be used... It may be used in the church. It may be used on our evening services. It may be. I mean, we give you the opportunity. We'll say, we'll just say, if you want to sign up, sign up. We'll get you plugged in on the night. But it may be that he wants to use that testimony of the people who are right around you as well. So it needs to come alive in you. It can't just sit there. God's done something in your life. It's to, it's to build you up and to encourage you to speak into somebody else's life. So we're going to pray that that would be set free in this room tonight. And so that's, that's what I want you to do right now. I want you to... Find somebody, maybe a group of two, maybe a group of three. Just say your names out loud and then pray for each other. And then we'll go back to praising the Lord. And the Lord is going to set some people free here tonight for just that reason. Testimony that he's put inside of you, God's going to do it. take up uh, much more of Pastor Gary's time, but I just, I love what you're talking about, and it's been really on my heart lately, is, yeah, just keep playing that chorus part, that's great, um, just our testimony before men, and uh, we just sang the song Sunday, Red Letters, and just the words of Jesus, and how important they are, and how powerful they are. And one that I think of, like when Pastor talks about testimony, is Jesus in Matthew says that if we confess him before men, that he will be faithful and confess us before his Father. And is something as simple 
is raised hands. Even in service at church, we don't go to church even just like Julie said earlier, just kind of, I don't know if it was here, maybe in prayer time, about uh, you just assume people are Jesus people just because they're at church. And it's not true. Not always true, right? So I'm going to challenge you. Uh, you're on camera here. You know you're being recorded every Tuesday night now. Uh, it's not a show. It's not a show. And I, one thing that I have uh, been thinking of and deeply just in my heart, Jesus went publicly to a cross to be displayed publicly for you and for me. And we need to publicly declare him before the world, before our peers, before men, wherever we go. So let's stand. We shouldn't have an arm on a lap or on a side tonight. Our God reigns, and we proclaim the name of Jesus here. Amen.
will cry out because he's gonna be praised. Better be us. All that has breath. section of scripture here tonight. I spent a lot of time reading today, a lot of different things, and uh, coming from a study I'm doing in an R.A. Tory book, I've mentioned this on Sunday as well, but how to pray, how to study the Bible, R.A. Tory. Uh, it's, a, it's a classic because it was, it was written so long ago, and it's so relevant to today, and so is God's Word the same way, and um, it's interesting to me because 
I just found out Dad was sharing with Pastor Josh, and and I and I think of you think of long ago and ancestors and all those things and what what was taught and, and age and all that kind of thing. And my dad had mentioned to him, he says that my grandpa Nap, it was on June 25th, I reminded him that was my grandpa Nap's birthday on June 25th, and I told Pastor Josh, he said, I'll never forget that. Well, you told him he didn't forget, and he told me, now I'll never forget. And uh, But then another thing that got me was what he said. He goes, my grandpa, so one generation away, was born June 25th, 1898. My grandpa was born in the 1800s. <laughs> you want to feel old? <laughs> Just start throwing some of those numbers around. <laughs> um, and so then I'm reading this book that's that way as well. So then I'm read from the Bible though too. And I want you to just to listen to some of these things because when you think of the idea of praying unto God, and it's something for us to think about for ourselves in this room. If we're going to talk about prayer, we're going to come here early and we're going to pray together and those just quiet time. We need just intimate quiet time to get alone with God. And, and we need it on our own and we need that corporately when we come together in here and those possibilities all exist. But then sometimes you know, teach me how to pray. Teach me some things about prayer. Show me some things about prayer. We need that too. We, we need that in our life. How to pray with power. Because we've all been in times where we pray and just felt like we're just talking, if we're honest. We've all been in times where you've started to pray with the best intentions of the world. The next thing you know, you don't remember that you were even praying. You're thinking about something else and you're thinking about what's for dinner tonight, where you're going next and all the schedule that you got to keep up. And wasn't I just praying a minute ago or... Or you sit down and you start praying with everything with the best intention in mind and then you wake up and it's morning. What was I praying about? <laughs> you know, that's why I said one Sunday, you better be top of my list because there's times where if you're not top of the list, you don't want to be down at the bottom because maybe I didn't even get to you. And I want to be more intentional about those times. And if, if I'm going to fall asleep, then don't let that be my prayer time. It's okay, it's your parting thought, but let my prayer time, it's really going to be attacking and going after things of the Lord. Set that aside. I'm not going to miss it. Um, this is a section of scripture in Acts chapter 12 Peter's miraculous escape from prison it's entitled here it was about that time that King Herod arrested some who belonged to the church intending to persecute them and he had James the brother of John put to death with a sword and when he saw that this pleased the Jews he proceeded to seize Peter also this happened during the Feast of Unleavened Bread, and after arresting him, he put him in prison and handing him over to, the, to be guarded by four squads of soldiers each, so 16 soldiers to keep track of one guy. I'm going to make a spectacle of him so he's not getting away. Have you had a bad day today? Well, you're not being guarded by 16 soldiers in prison. And Herod intended to bring him out for the public trial after the Passover. So Peter was kept in prison, but the church was earnestly praying to God for him. You think it's not important to come together? The night before Herod was to bring him to trial, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains, and sentries stood guard at the entrance. He was... He was in a spot he wasn't going to get out of. And suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared. And a light shone in the cell. And he struck Peter on the side and woke him up. And he said, quick, get up. He said this, and the chains fell off Peter's wrists. I want to stop for a minute and ask you, when you go to the Lord in prayer unto God, are you ready for suddenly? Or are you making excuses in your mind of God will answer in his time, God will do and he can, God will, and we start, and we start making excuses of our timeline, or are you in faith believing that I'm going to call on the Lord, unto the Lord, and I'm ready for even suddenly to happen? 
because it works that way. Not all the time, but sometimes. And I gotta be ready for God to do anything because he is God. Then the angel of the Lord said to him, put on your clothes and sandals. And Peter did so. Wrap up your cloak around you and follow me. And the angel told him. And Peter followed him out of the prison. But he had no idea what the angel was doing was really happening. He thought he was seeing a vision. And they passed the first and second guards and came to the iron gate leading to the city and it opened for them by itself. And they went through it. And when they had walked the length of one street, suddenly the angel left them. <laughs> then Peter came to himself and said, Now, I know without a doubt that the Lord sent his angel and rescued me from Herod's clutches, from everything the Jewish people were anticipating. And when this had dawned on him, he went to the house of Mary, the mother of John, also called Mark, where many people had gathered and were praying. And Peter knocked down the, the entrance, and a servant girl named Rhoda came and answered the door. And when she recognized Peter's voice, she was so overjoyed that she ran without opening it and exclaimed, Peter's at the door! Here's the response. You're out of your mind. Isn't that really the humanity of us? See, when I say, oh, no, no, I believe, I go with faith, I'm, I'm looking in Scripture where people who are calling the Lord, and they, they didn't understand. we got to alert ourselves to that. And they told her that, and she kept insisting that it was so, and they said it must be an angel. But Peter kept knocking, and when they opened the door and they saw it was him, they were astonished. And Peter motioned with his hand for them to be quiet and described how the Lord had brought him out of prison. Tell James and the brothers about this, he said, and then he left for another place. It kind of un unravels a lot of things for us in that section of Scripture attitudes of our heart and not understanding what God's doing and, and, and thinking there's just no way that God could do it and all those things that would have to happen and yet he did. And then we're in prayer. This is, this is revolving around prayer. See, verse 5 of that section, Acts chapter 12, you can go and read it all over again for yourself if you like, but 12.5 says this, Peter therefore was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. Unto God. How much of our prayer is really unto God before we sit down? I mean, really practicing the presence of God where you're saying, I want to be in his presence. I want to understand who he is. I want to honor him and worship him and praise him and lift his name on high before I ever get to my list. But how many of us really, we just, we just want to get to talking, don't we? We just want it all to be that instead. But it needs to be unto God, who he is. Philippians 4, 6 says, Be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your request be made known unto God. <laughs> unto God. You need to get that in your spirit and just keep repeating unto God to yourself that I would... I was sitting there because I'd gone over this today that I, I kept telling myself that unto God, unto God, unto God, unto God, unto God. It will change your thought process unto God. So notice that verse, unto God. The prayer that has power is the prayer that is offered unto God. And you might ask the question, is not all prayer unto God? And the answer to that is no. Very much, and this is just reading a little, I wrote down a little piece out of this book, very much of so-called prayer, both public and private, is not unto God. In order that prayer should be really unto God, there must be a definite and conscious approach to God when we pray. We must have a definite and vivid realization that God is bending over and listening as we pray. You've got the ear of God when you start to talk. And you start getting that in your mind, that he's listening. He's really listening when you're talking. That gets your attention a little bit, doesn't it? He's listening. And how frustrated, I, I get frustrated with this all the time. She's not here tonight, so I can say it. 
recording, oh. Uh. <laughs> I've already started. <laughs> no, it's not that bad. You start into a sentence, you start into a story, and then you just stop talking. You kind of, you turn your head, you start to listen, and, and then they just stop, and you're sitting there, you're just like, you're like looking like, have I just lost my mind, or did she just stop in the middle of a story? And so you wait, and you think, don't interrupt, and then nothing. So I just start moving on. And all of a sudden, the second you start moving out, like trigger something that wakes them back up. I don't know how this all works. It wakes them back up, and I'll say, see, you never listen to me. There's been a solid minute that nothing happened here. I thought maybe it was over. I wasn't sure. But we were like that with the Lord a lot. We're going before him, and he's got his ear, and all of a sudden, you're just, you've checked out. You're thinking of something else, and he's like, Ben, what's next? And he, We never get back to it, but we're aware of it now that I bring it up. Like, oh yeah, I do that. Because even with prayer and study, study to show thyself approved unto what? Unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. This is unto God. Our life should be unto God. And yet we've got it fragmented in so many ways that it, it's, it's falling far short. And so unto God. The second thing is to pray intensely, earnestly. The book says stretched, uh, it said like this, stretched outedly. And had it all separated out, said that, stretched outedly. Like this is where you're just laid out before him, where you are, you, you, you are, you are intensely going after it. It's, it's as to a athletic contest when you are pouring yourself into it. You're holding nothing back. There, there's the, the focus is, is so into that moment. Nothing is going to distract you. The crowd can be screaming, and all that does is build into your spirit. It doesn't take away. It doesn't distract you. They can be for you or against you. It doesn't make any difference. This game is going on, and we're accomplishing this task on this floor. It's something strange that happens. No matter how bad they hate you or scream, it, 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 you're unaffected. But somehow in life, somebody says one thing and we're just upended. And I think I try to think of my days as an athlete. It was a long time ago. And nothing interrupted that. Nothing got in the way. In fact, if you were coming down on me, it just, you got more out of me. And then we get in the church and with each other, and one little thing gets said. One little thing is done the wrong way. One little sideways look. One little word unspoken where, they, where somebody just turned and they were avoiding. And all these little things that happen. And you just want to just give up. Man, what happened to that fighting spirit? What happened to the thing that God put in you to, to press on and go on? Stretched out before him. Earnest, intense desire. And then there's this power of united prayer. I say that part to just read you instead of just explaining in a nutshell in here. Because we always talk the importance of coming together in prayer, and it's so important. Can you pray at home? Yeah, you can pray at home. And should you pray at home? Yeah, you should. Should you get alone? Yes, you should get alone with him. You should. It's, it's, it's all these things. All these things are caught up in all of this. But then this power of united prayer. It's a short section, so I'll just read it. It says, The third secret of right praying is also found in the same verse, Acts 12, 5. It appears in the three words of the church. There is a power of united prayer. Of course, there is a power in prayer of an individual, but there is a vastly increased power in united prayer. God delights in the unity of his people and he seeks to emphasize it in every way. And so he pronounces a special blessing upon united prayer. We read Matthew 18, 19, if two or three agree on earth as 
touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. The unity, however, must be real. The passage just quoted does not say that if two shall agree in asking, and we hear it that way, so I'll just, just, just agree and everything's going to be okay. But if you shall agree as to touching anything, they shall ask. Two persons might agree to ask the same thing, and yet there'd be no real agreement in touching the thing that they've asked. One might ask it because they really desired it. The other might ask simply because it was please, pleases their friend. But where there is real agreement, where the Spirit of God brings two believers into perfect harmony as concerning that which they may ask of God, where the Spirit lays the same burden on two hearts, in all such prayer there's absolutely irresistible power. God is so looking for it that he just, he can't, he just, it's like he can't resist responding in a way to come with power on your behalf. And when two people see that together, you like, it burns in your heart in the same way. And I'm not just saying it because you're saying it. I'm just going to say that, and I agree, and I agree, and I agree. No, I start, I, I catch the vision, I see the vision, I see what God is doing, and I'm pouring my heart out before him. And we all begin to see that in a way where we corporately begin to do that. There's no finger pointing, there's no backing down, there's no one, no. We just see it and love each other, and we bind together in it, and the Spirit of the Lord is just all over it. And it changes everything. And I get so excited about this because of that. It binds us together in this. It draws and gives us a, a community and church and what God is doing on a greater scale because we've come together and met him in prayer. And we catch the vision and our hearts burn for him in that. And so it's, those are just thoughts I wanted you to have tonight about prayer itself. It is unto God. It is praying intensely and the power of uniting together. And so start incorporating those things in your life. Start thinking about those things. And start thinking about, when I start talking to him, Lord, I will unto God to you tonight, Lord, in any way, and pour myself out to you. I want us to go unto God with these prayer requests. They come right here. If you could grab these right here and start handing those out on the speaker here. Clayton, you grab the ones on that speaker and just start handing those out. We're going to have a special prayer unto God for JP tonight as well. We're going to start with this. Um, JP is a, is a living testimony that happened in this room, and he's going on a, um, his concert tour is, is starting this month. Yeah, amen. And it's, it's so ironic because he was so afraid to give up what he had already accomplished in his life. And we kept having conversations. JP, you don't understand the stage the Lord's trying to give you. You need to just drop everything and give your whole life to him. He's got a whole other stage for you. A whole other group of people are waiting to hear. A whole other creativity is going to come through you that's going to happen if you just would trust and let go. And he didn't want to let go. There must be a way, we hear it, there must be a way for me to reach those old friends at the same time so I can keep all those old friends and still do what I do. We hear it all the time. And all that does is drag us down in the pit. If we don't break free, we never know what God has on the other side and victory to just step out. And all that he has waiting on the other side, if you just will trust me. And it must have took us a year. Was that? And in that year, he couldn't even think of a song to write. I thought it was awesome. He didn't like it. <laughs> and then the, then the floodgates just opened on him, my friend, and I'm so thankful. So we begin tonight by finding a prayer partner, men with men, women with women praying for the requests that you have and please when we get done praying for that we're putting JP in the middle of the room and we're going to pray that God would guide him through this tour he's about to take that he has designed for him so find your prayer partners first and pray for the things that God's given you gather right here. Brother JP, come in the middle. Keep your cars. We're not done singing God is so good. We've got, we got to spend just a minute on that at least. Uh, let's put your hands on JP or somebody that's touching JP. And let's all bind this together. Gather in. All right. 
Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we come unto you, O God, because you are great and greatly to be praised. You're an awesome God. Lord, this is a story of, of rescue and, and salvation and restoration. And all, returning to you and giving all to you. Lord, it's, it's all of it. It's a, it's a whole package deal, Lord. And you, now we, we have JP standing here on the brink of, of an awesome testimony that's unfolding before our eyes, Lord, a design that you had from the beginning of time, Lord, that for a while he couldn't see. But Lord, now he sees it. It's in view, and you've, you've arranged it and designed it, and it's, it's, it's right there, Lord. I'm praying that you would use this man of God, Lord, to, to, to sing your praises, to give a testimony of heaven to the people that he'll stand before, that many would come to know you as their personal Savior through what you've done in his life, God. And we are so thankful to bind together in prayer and call the power of heaven on his life to work in and through him. And we say thank you for being a great God, Lord, that you would be praised, that you would be known, that the name of Jesus would be proclaimed through this man. And we give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. with me. I am blessed. I am blessed. I am called. I am healed. I am whole. I am saved in Jesus' name. I live in the with your powerful Thank you. 